Thanks for staying with us. Now, if you're just tuning in, is our CEO feature for the month of March, and we're discussing women leadership and mentorship with Adeolu Adewumize. Now, um, here's our second quote, because I told you today is a very special day, right? So our second quote, amazing things happen when women help other women. This is so beautiful. This is so beautiful. Like, you go hallelujah, you know? So mentorship, you know, is defined as the guidance um, provided by a mentor, especially an experienced person in a company or educational institution. So how much mentorship do we see amongst the women? I mean, we'll, we'll switch it up and add a bit of leadership. Now, please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 I was going to ask before the break that... I mean, Uti and I were having a conversation yesterday. We we're talking about a certain kind of a certain woman leader in the in the space right now, where it seems like everybody that has worked with her says she's this, you know, very very harsh, very very strict, and very you know. So listening to you and looking at you, I'm wondering like, ah. because somebody will look at you and say, ah, you know, this uh, phrase they say, ah, come like you you can't, you know. I mean, does it really? Do you really get the job done? Because they have painted this picture in my head that as a woman, you have to be 10 times tough. You have to be very, very harsh. You have to be auto autocratic leader. You can't be, you know, you have to just put your foot down. If not, they walk over your head. And this I see people do all the time. And for me, it doesn't sit well in my system because that's not my structure of my, my own style of leadership, right? But now hearing you you know, talk about, you know, your style of leadership. It's giving me some hope that, okay, I might not be wrong after all, <laughs> you know. But what do you say about what you've noticed about generally, you know, women in leadership position in Nigeria? You know, if you were to assess that space, what's your assessment? It's probably not just Nigeria. So mm -hmm. Society mm -hmm. plays a big role here, right? So it's a man's world. It's still a man's world. Let's be frank, ladies. And the business is run almost exclusively by men. So women for generations have felt that if you, need, if you want to succeed, you need to behave like a man. Mm. Uh, back in the day, people would wear suits, or women would wear suits, mm. and you know, the padded shoulders back in the 80s so that they would look more manly. And it's only now more recently that women are taking more advantage of the feminine side, which I think is a very welcome uh, adjustment. Mm -hmm. However, on the leadership side, that's not moving as quickly. Yeah. We see it now uh, in the COVID times that a lot of women leaders of countries have not been praised mm -hmm. for that sort of, let's say, more feminine mm -hmm. type of leadership. But that's very recent. And I, so my hope is that now that people have seen the autocratic leadership in juxtaposition versus uh, a different type of leadership, that they, they will be able to judge for themselves which one is actually more successful. Mm -hmm. And what, what I can say in addition is that you can only be true to yourself. Yeah. I can't act like you, mm -hmm. to you or anyone else. I can only act like myself. So this is who I am. And it, it means that, uh, yes, I'm a friendly person who likes to smile, but it also means that I get stuff done. Yes, mm -hmm. I, I can. Um, <laughs> Please yeah. attest to it. <laughs> Because, you know, for you to be UTC, yeah, you know, UTC is very tough. Oh, God. <laughs> for you to be UTC CEO, and the way she, you know, I mean, you must have, she, she commands that, right? And without being harsh. And she's in a small package. <laughs> small but dangerous. Yeah. Um, it, it, so it's interesting that we talk about, you know, leadership and, you know, we're talking about the mindset. But I'd like to sort of move that conversation over to mentorship and the value that it offers for women. Because I love the quote, and you said hallelujah when she read it out. We all agree. Um, and this women supporting women, I, I feel oh. it's a very new trend. <laughs> it's been in the last maybe, I think, five years that I've really seen this focus because before it used to be like the crabs in the bucket and everybody's trying to you know, get to the top, you know, pulling each other down. But somewhere along the line, women have realized that we're stronger when we help each other. So what is that... I guess help people to understand the value of mentorship, what you can truly get out of it. Because sometimes people have come to me to say, can you mentor me? And then it's a take, take, take. And I'm like, but you haven't brought anything to the table. And it's not because I don't want to help you, but maybe that understanding that it's like a symbiotic, I hope yeah, that's the right word. Relationship. Yeah, relationship. That's very true. And I'm glad you talk about that because 
a lot of times, it's even, not even the take, 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 but a lot of times the mentor will feel pressured that like I need to give, give, give. Mm. Mm. And there's so much that you can learn from each other. Absolutely. And that's what you need to focus on. Mm. Uh, you know, I don't want to go into any concrete examples, but you know, I've, I've had mentors throughout my life. I've had uh, mentees throughout my life. And every conversation is always so enlightening. I feel like I've taken something from every single mm -hmm. conversation, no matter on which side that I'm sitting. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't even have to be this like formal mentor-mentee relationship. I love speaking to my colleagues in the company mm -hmm. because they all tend to be a lot younger than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that old, but they're all so much younger. <laughs> and, and I'm just learning so much from them. Yeah. I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So let me bring in Tammy. Okay, so um, we know that, I mean, from what you've also said, we know that there's still some glass ceilings and, you know, when we still consider statistics as it is now, there's still industries that don't have as many women participation and not just in corporate space, also when we look at politics also, as particularly in Nigeria, we see that participation of women is low. So my question would be about your thoughts on, let's bring it now to the corporate space. Is there anything that corporate organizations should be doing to drive inclusion for women? Um, you're a CEO, you're doing well, you're a woman, and I'm sure that if you have any thoughts along these lines, they would be of great influence to other CEOs who perhaps are listening. So is there anything they should be doing for inclusion? And are there any merits to doing this? Yes, so I would say for sure. As, as a woman CEO, I can't say anything uh, differently. And the thing is that companies need to be very intentional about this. This won't happen accidentally. Uh, I've heard statistics that say that in 200 years, finally, we'll be on an equal plane. plane. So uh, it's not going to happen in, in our lifetime, but at least let's, let's see movement. Uh, and, and, and so in, in Alliance, for example, we do a lot of things around looking at the number of women in each level, uh, looking at the, the, the pay gap the infamous pay gap between people who are in the same role or similar levels and where men tend to get paid more than women, even when they're in careers that are predominantly female. So uh, it is, this is a lot of what we need to do on that side, but then it's also around mentorship as we're talking. So helping and, and assisting the women who are in the company that to, to show them the paths that they can that they can take and push in them. Sometimes you just have to push people because as oh, Uti mentioned, yeah. yeah, as Uti mentioned, you know, sometimes it can take a lot to get a woman to, yeah. to take an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you just have to kick someone in the butt and say, hey, you know, what's going up? Yeah. What's yeah. going I on now? I was just going to say that, you know, I think women, don't you think there should be a unique style of mentorship for women? Because women don't, can, you can't just mentor them the normal mentorship. Mm. You know, you must, that's butt kicking. It has to happen because mm. a lot of women are super scared. We are so blessed, you know, in terms of, you know, whatever it is. I, I mean, I have seen very, I've been blessed with, surrounded with very great women that I've seen them grow you know, literally from nothing, you know, to, to something. But you see, they're still very much afraid. There's someone I know right now that I know she has a wealth of experience, you know, when it comes to the finance space, you know, and all of that. Just take that, you know, next that, step. that next step. is almost like, you know, she's always afraid to Doubt take the self big, self. like bite the big um, chunk of the cake, you know. So do you think, you know, how do you think you can help such women, you know, to push them? I'm very frank in, in, my, <laughs> in my feedback. I will, just, I will just ask you why. What is it that's stopping you? What is the worst that can happen? Uh, you know, I, I don't think this is the time to, to coddle people and say, oh, you know, they're there. I'm sure you'll be fine. Ah, okay, I'm no, beginning I, to I don't, see I don't have that to... <laughs> coming out. <laughs> Let me take some comments. <laughs> All right, tell me you have some comments with you. Oh. Yes, I do. Go ahead. So there's this comment here from Kike from Ketu. Kike says, I just love the CEO. We need women like her to mentor more women. Wow. So that's Kike from Ketu. Another feedback here, it says, it's from Dele this time around. It says, I have the same style of leadership like your guest. And to be honest, I usually get a better result. People know you really care about them beyond the job. So that's Dele. People know you care beyond the job. That's fantastic. All right, so it's so sad to say I, I never had women bosses. 
I worked with, uh, I'm sorry, I never had women bosses I worked with that inspired me for greatness. Ah, okay. Mm. Rather, you just feel they want you to remain small or fail. Thank you for inspiring me today to do better. That's from Dolapo, from um, Ogba. Oh yeah, so that thing is there. We, we need and a lot more room yeah. to show us what it really yeah. means. Because be you see, leader. these things also amongst women. We are talking mentorship, we are still there. Where a woman has risen to a position of authority, a position of power, it seems like you do not want every other person to come there. You know, we see, let's be sure we are being honest with ourselves though. Because I don't see it <laughs> no, it's true, I don't see it play out when it comes to men. It's more from the women, like you know, you are the one stopping you know, the, 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 your fellow female so, folk. So do you think it's that? Because I think we kind of hit the nail on the head where um, when Adilu talked about women needing to sort of take on the role with a man's example and a man's roadmap. So it's the interpretation of women wanting to be aggressive, wanting to be... Mm. So it comes out as oppressive, you know, we're kind of trying to stifle people. But you don't think yeah. there's an element of that thing inside women? Well, can I well, say maybe something? Because I'm not like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I, I used to say this. I mean, in this short time that I have worked, I've met two people that I think they've been the best bosses I've ever had. Two people. One of them is male. One of them is female. And both of them have been amazing. While I work with both of them, I used to think, wow, this is great. Career, mentorship. They were just excellent at it. You know, they were not competitive. They were the sort of people that will always help you grow. And one is male, one is female. So I've been privileged to have that example. But for people who perhaps have had two consecutive or three consecutive or five consecutive bad female bosses, I think they would just generalize naturally and say that, oh, women must be bad. And in some cases, for example, some people have had like the person who read, you read a comment, thankfully we have someone who inspires our hair. But on the other side, some people have worked with males that, you know, gave them a, a bad image and they, they just generalize and just stop. I don't ever want to work with a man, you know, he could harass, he could do this, he could do that. I think that people are, are just people and they were different. I mean, I'm glad we have someone who's a good example here and I believe everyone here is, right? So I think it's just, people can be people and we should just be careful of generalizing really because Absolutely. of one person's bad impression. Absolutely. Very true. Very true. Okay, so I have another comment uh, or two rather says, I always have the feeling of not being good enough or ready. Your quote today allowed me become vulnerable by saying, maybe um, I'm not that good yet, but I can handle it. Oh, all right. Our quote inspired you. Kenny from Abuja. Then Adiolu uh -huh. has shown you, um, has shown you could be kind and be a boss. You don't have to lose yourself to corporate culture. Just get the job done. That's from Joy Aja. So if you had... One thing, you know, one, one big thing you would like to change in the corporate world when it comes to women and their styles of leadership that probably you've seen around, one big thing that, you know, you say, you, this is what I would love to see, you know, going forward. What would that be? Don't lose yourself and don't try to be a man. Mm. Uh, you know, we are all created in God's image and God created us for a reason. So why are we always trying to be like someone Something else? else? Yeah. Mm. Uh, only we, only I can be myself, right? And I'm, I'm the best at being myself. So, so let me just do that. And that's what I would encourage all women. Don't try to, you know, fake Boss it until lady. you make it and act like ma a man and all this stuff. Just be yourself and know that if you believe in yourself, if you have that self-confidence, you will succeed in who you are. Absolutely. So one, I want to come back to this, her simplicity. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In Lagos. Mm -hmm. You know, there are some places you go to, mm -hmm. people look at you and they look at your style. I mean, they, they, just act, they just look at you from head to toe and already they've, do you get that a lot? You know, they just look at you and they've sized you already and they, they put you in a, in, a, in a box. And I see this happening all the time, giving a wrong impression about how probably a woman should look like or how she should be like. Okay, so because she's in a certain role, there are some things she must have, you must have the all the designer bags, <laughs> <laughs> all the shoes, and all of those, you know. Because I believe that these are also part of the pressures that men will say, women, if you give that position, they'll use all your money to buy jewelry. <laughs> and that's the truth. <laughs> so do you get that a lot? <laughs> and how do you handle it? I, I get a lot of surprise because I'm not into all that stuff. Mm. I, I, I like shoes. I like bags. Uh, I even like jewelry. But it's never been something that's really 
appealed to me in, in that same way. And I, I'm just who I am. Uh, Uti knows, you know, all this. It's not usually there. <laughs> it's not you. <laughs> okay, so Uti, we have a comment. To, oh, okay, this person didn't put her name. The best boss ever. Um, I've ever worked. Uh, I've ever was actually a woman. Okay, the best boss I've ever had was actually a woman. I was so skeptical of having a female boss, but she turned out fantastic. But you didn't drop your name. Um, that's some um, someone. So that comment actually mm -hmm. I, it just reminds me of a story. So I had always had um, male bosses. The one female boss that I had um, early on in my career was a bit of a nightmare. Um, <laughs> and my close friends knew this. So when I was coming back to Nigeria, um, the entire process I had gone through of recruitment, my boss was supposed to be a man. And then I get a call about two weeks before I was meant to return to Nigeria to say, ah, your new boss is a woman. <laughs> my entire, Sister. like I freaked out and I shut down. And just the memory of having that experience. And you know, Fantastic to say today, it's one of the best bosses I've had and I've gone on to have other female bosses. Mm -hmm. But what is it that a, a lot of the people that are watching today, I'm sure want to be you know, exemplary leaders. How do we start to cultivate? What, what is it that we should be cultivating within ourselves? You know, when you say be yourself, what is it that you can do to make you a better leader? Because there's just so much. You know, when I think about leadership sometimes, I mean, now I'm leading a new team and I'm thinking, oh, how do I navigate these new sets of people? But what should ladies really be looking at in terms of developing leadership skills? Educate yourself. Hmm. That, that's a lot of what I've done over the years is to read. I'm a voracious reader, as, as you mentioned. And I've read so many leadership books, I've read so many articles, and I just kind of soak it all in. And, and, and it doesn't mean that I'll pick up every single piece because I'll, I'll take the things that fit my style and I'll discard the rest. Mm -hmm. And that's what you really need to do in everything that you want to do, education. I, I'm always about research and education. Curiosity. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think we've had a fantastic conversation. Let me just take one final comment. Just a question, how does one be a mentee oh okay that's a good one somebody's asking how do they reach you if they want to become your mentee oh, why? <laughs> Take a they're number. already in love oh. with you <laughs> but you didn't drop your name well okay, I'm, Rita. I'm very easy to find on linkedin mm. i i always try to respond to everyone who reaches out so just reach out i'm on linkedin i love that you know there's something i was just telling who was I telling? Like, why do leaders feel like because you are in a position of leadership, people send you messages you don't respond? On your, on your phone and SMS, you don't respond maybe till five weeks later. Is that not a very, very bad culture? I think that's very unprofessional. Like, it's so unprofessional. Yeah, are very unprofessional. But people read it here in this climate. They read it like, mm -hmm. oh, you're a very busy person. Like, no. That's, I, I tell people that's the wrongest thing yeah. to do. The best thing you can say, oh, I'm busy at the moment. You know exactly. what? I'll take my time to look through this and probably just send me a reminder next. But you mm -hmm. must respond. Yes. You know? So she's going to respond to you on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to be having you tomorrow. Tell us more. Uh, t we want you to tell us about it. insurance. Just give us a sneak peek, you know, the insurance space. How is it looking? I think COVID helped you guys. Mm, I don't want to say COVID <laughs> helped. That, that seems a bit... <laughs> but what, what I would say is that ins insurance is, I think of it as a safety net, especially in this part of the world. Uh, this is the safety net that is disintegrating from the familial side that we had culturally. Mm -hmm. That's where insurance can step in. And mm -hmm. that's what I want to talk about tomorrow. Absolutely. So you heard it from the horse's mouth. She's going to be here tomorrow. So let me quickly take final comments from um, Temi and Uti. We still have one, like one minute left. Yay. Temi, so what's your final comment? What, what have you learned today? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's really a lot. Uh, I think I'll just say that it's just good to, for me, it's just good to see somebody who leads by example and to have all of these examples before us. So it's been inspiring for me. It's been more inspiring to just hear those words that she shared. Thank you for coming. That was the whole goal of the show anyway. <laughs> yeah. see. Um, I think the most important thing for me, uh, for every woman, is to learn to be yourself. You are unique. You have your own um, intrinsic value that you can offer to everyone. So, yes, you have to learn. 
you have to be a voracious reader and it's so easy these days you don't have to log around a book you know there's so much to, books. yeah so you, you have to learn to be the kind of leader that inspires people the kind of leader that people want to follow so it's not even for me so much about leadership styles because I know me personally sometimes it's like that's what we're doing and that's how we're doing it you like it we'll be just fine so, <laughs> so different styles work at different times but it's also important to understand um for me it's always from the perspective of nurturing people yeah. i remember the first time somebody walked up to me and said i want you to mentor me and i thought me mm -hmm. i've arrived <laughs> <laughs> so i mean it's important for us to just project that so that people also feel comfortable to know that you're available to them you're willing to give of your time and your knowledge to yeah. develop them all right i want to just say it's been an absolute pleasure yes. talking to you this evening i mean i really really enjoyed my time with you you know it's one thing for you to read about people it's another thing for you to experience them you know as little as the makeup artist you know she said something nice about you so i think you know you you are an example to a lot of women and i hope women would would, would see that we are beyond makeup hair and all of those things truly if you are yourself you would know that some of these things you are you are borrowing it from other people. If you want to really be yourself as a woman, there are many things that you will not bother your head about. I tell you, that's the truth. <laughs> Thank you so much. So we we'll look forward Thank to having you, you tomorrow again. Yes. All righty. Waze was birthed from the need to inform, inspire, and influence lives towards action. And this year, we started our CSR focused on curbing unemployment in Nigeria. So if you are a company, please partner with us by allocating internship slots. And if you're a job seeker, keep watching ways and follow us on all our social media handles as this will be an all year round engagement. So tell your friends to keep all eyes on ways. Now, in case you miss today's quotes, again, there were two quotes. Let me read the first one. Women need to shift from thinking I'm not ready to do that to thinking I want to do that and I'll learn by doing it. That's our first quote for the day. And the second quote is amazing things happen when women help other women so let us all be supportive of each other it's not just celebrating international women's day and just going and going on the gram and taking pictures let's really hold a woman's hand beside us and take her to the next level we'll see you tomorrow at 8 p.m as we bring another great conversation to your screen with our ceo stay with us oh i said stay with us again we'll see you tomorrow yeah <laughs>